In this demonstration we're going to have a look at how we can configure direct access by running the getting started wizard. So what we've done here is we've come onto our domain controller and what we're going to do is we're going to create security group for direct access client computers. First thing to do is just launch up active direct users and computers. Next thing to do here is we're just going to create a new organizational unit. which we're going to call DA underscore clients or you. So we'll select OK at this point here. Now that we've done this, next thing to do here is we're just going to create a new security group for our direct access clients. So we'll right click at this point, click on new, and we'll go for group, and then we'll fill out the group wizard. We're going to call this DA clients. What we're going to do here is we're going to make this a global security group, and we'll select OK. Then what we'll do, we'll right click, go to properties, and we'll go to the members tab. And we're going to add our LON CL1 client. So we'll select our add button. We'll click on our object types, select computers, click OK at this point here, and then we'll just type in LON hyphen CL1. Now we'll just check the names. Now we'll select OK and OK again. Now we've done this, we'll move over to a routing machine and we'll configure direct access by running the getting started wizard. On my router machine, we'll click on Tools. Then what we'll do here is we'll come down to Remote Access Management and we'll launch up Remote Access Management. Then once we're in our Remote Access Management, next thing to do here is we're going to go for Direct Access and VPN. Then within here, we're going to run our Getting Started wizard. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to deploy Direct Access only because that's what I want this machine to be used for. We're going to specify that this network topology is the edge here. We're not hiding this behind an edge device with two network adapters or behind an edge device with a single network adapter. This is going to be the endpoint. Next thing to do here now is all we need to do here is click on our type the public name or IP address and fill out the table. And the IP address I'm going to use is 131.107.0.10. Now I'll select next. On the Configure Remote Access, we're going to click on the click here to edit the wizard settings. We'll just verify that the group policy settings are correct. So we've got the Direct Access GPO name is going to be Direct Access Server Settings and the Client GPO name will be Direct Access Client Settings. So the next thing to do here is now to just go to our Remote Clients and just click our Change button. We don't want this set up for all domain computers, so all we'll do here is we'll just remove domain computers. And then we'll select our Add button. And what we want to add here is we just want to add the group that we created for DA clients. So we'll just type in DA, let's check the names, find our DA client and select OK. As we're only using direct access for mobile computers, we'll ensure that we have the tick box enabled for direct access for mobile computers only. And then we select next. That brings us into our direct access client setup. We're not going to change any of the network connectivity settings. So at this point here, we'll just select finish. And just on the review page, we'll select OK. And then what we'll do at this point here is we select finish just to configure remote access. As we can see, a tick is means that everything has been applied successfully. A tick is always good. So at this point here, we'll select our close button. And then all we'll do at this point here, we'll just restart our routing and remote access server. And once the server is restarted, everything is complete. And that's the end of this demonstration of using the getting start wizard to configure direct access. Thank you.